God's Not Dead 2 is the pinnacle of stupidity. It's just kind of baffling. This movie isn't as bad or offensive as the last one, but it somehow manages to be even more stupid, if that makes sense. While God's Not Dead was full of stereotypes, racism, and annoying preachy shit, God's Not Dead 2 is so detached from anything I would call reality, it's hard to even take it seriously. No one acts like a human, no one does anything that makes sense, the movie doesn't feel like it takes place on the planet Earth. This movie feels so dated, like it's something from the early 90s. And it's not even a good commercial for Christianity. Live outside of the Toy House here in Hope Springs. You I'm did great. it! <laughs> God, good! So let me take a second to address my first God's Not Dead review. Of course, a lot of people liked the review, but there are also a lot of people who did not, which is fine. But I'm willing to bet a large amount of these people simply dislike the video because they're Christian. So, just like I said in this first video, let me say it again. This is not an attack on your religion. Being Christian does not make you a bad person. This is a movie. God did not make this movie. Jesus did not make this film. This was made by a bunch of corporate hacks who found a niche market that they could sell shitty religious films. So let's not be divided. Let's all unite together and laugh at how stupid this fucking movie is. I will be tackling religion a little bit in this review, but once again, I am not attacking any religion. Now it's kind of impossible not to talk about this movie without talking about religion, so do your best to not be triggered. And I think it's also fair to bring up what religion I am, especially when talking about this movie. People have asked me, what religion do you follow? The answer is Scientology. <laughs> this is our leader. His name is Zeno. He may... I don't know why you're laughing. <laughs> Are there any fellow Scientologists in the room? None? But you guys can join if you want, because unlike most religions, we open it to everybody. Unless you're poor, then you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> we hold meetings in the 8th floor men's bathroom. If anyone wants to come, admission fee is $85. And the exit fee is only $80. You get the student discount. I have a magic drink. I left it over there, unfortunately. Um, that's what cures all the diseases. It's $150 a sip. And it works for 16 seconds. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's all I have to say. I hope you guys join us. It's a, it's a fun cult. <laughs> Pure Flix is actually the worst thing ever. What is Pure Flix? It's the company that made this shitty movie, as well as other shitty religious films. I have to go back to the Holy Land. We will meet in Jerusalem and we must bear witness to what happens there. What? I said this in my last video, but I'm gonna say it again. This movie isn't really a movie. I actually regret calling it a film thus far in this review. So from now on, I will refer to this um, God's Not Dead 2 as a commercial. So this commercial only portrays Christians as good people. Amy, that's wonderful. Everyone else is a horrible, ugly, old, annoying, mean, soulless, disgusting person. You know what hate is, Tom? I hate what people like your clients stand for and what they're doing to our society. Every Catholic in this movie is young and beautiful and dresses well. The planet I live on, young people are much more liberal and open to other ideas and more open to science and philosophy and are less religious. You know young people now are less religious than ever. You know they don't go to church as often as older people do. You know that there are far more younger people who are atheists or some sort of other religion. That's usually the way younger people are. They're rebellious. They don't go to church or read the Bible. They're too busy fucking and doing drugs. But in this movie, it's all the young pretty people who love God and worship him and read the Bible every day and are willing to protest outside of school to support Sabrina the drying ovaries witch. They make stupid religious propaganda to cater to this audience. And that wouldn't even be that much of a bad thing. The problem is that this film is spreading lies. Things that aren't true. And dividing people even more. For no reason. 
It does this by painting everyone who isn't a Christian as a bad person, which is terrible. We're going to prove once and for all that God is dead. No one wants to kill God. A majority of atheists don't believe in God simply because there's no proof for him. In the opinion of atheists, this does not mean they're bad people and this does not mean they want to fucking kill God. Of course, if you're a rational person, you know that not being Christian does not make you a bad person. But the movie has to make it seem this way to cater to its core audience. Even if none of it is true. Every example of Christian persecution in this movie is wrong. It's not true. The movie even claims to be inspired by true court cases. Which fascinated me because after seeing it, the movie was so dumb I couldn't believe any of it was true. They made sure to include all the court cases this movie is based on in the end credits, so I made sure to look at all of them. While I was looking it up, I found this wonderful article. Here's the link. The link's also in the description. That goes through every single one of these court cases this movie is based on. Let me get my reading glasses on. There's this whole grouping of court cases, which aren't even remotely connected to what this movie is about. These all basically say that Christian business owners were trying to refuse service to gay people. And of course, the court ruled that you have to serve everyone. Now, whether you agree with this or not, let's not talk about that. It has nothing to do with the movie that we watch. In this one, a fire chief of Atlanta sued the city after it fired him for expressing his religious beliefs about marriage in a book he wrote at the time. That one sounds pretty bad, but luckily this article looked a little further into it. And indeed, the fire chief who was fired wasn't fired because he wrote the book. It was because he was proselytizing on the job, handing out copies of the book to subordinates who never even asked for it. You can't do that! Then there's this whole grouping of cases. These court cases have nothing to do, again, with the movie. These court cases are about how Christians don't want to pay um, health insurance for certain things like abortion or contraceptives or birth control. Not related to anything this movie's about. This one's about how two ministers sued the city because they didn't want to do a marriage for a gay couple. Then there's a few more anti-gay ones. And again, it doesn't matter how you feel about any of these topics. They're not fucking related to anything in the movie! I'm trying to find one where it's like some teacher said something in the classroom and then got fired for it, but I don't see a single one. This one's against Planned Parenthood. This one's against gay people. Again, it doesn't matter what you feel about any of those topics. What the fuck does this movie have to do with any of that shit? This movie's about some woman saying Jesus in a classroom and then getting prosecuted for it. None of which happened. Pure Flix just flat out lied about what this movie's about and how true this movie is. Whether we admit it or not, we're at war. What the fuck are you talking about? Flat. There's nothing visually stimulating about this movie. There's no style to it, the music sucks. A flat, boring look. The set design is flat. All the costumes are boring and bad. All the cinematography is boring. There's no close-ups, there's no low shots, there's no aerial shots. There's no interesting lighting. I think there's one shot in the whole movie that actually like impressed me, and that's this one. And it's not a great shot, but at least it conveys some kind of like emotion, and you can understand what's going on in this shot. There's some meaning behind it. The rest of this movie looks like a sitcom. There's no depth to any of the images. The camera hardly moves. Everything's just so flat and boring. It looks like a movie that costs half a million dollars to make. Once again, I don't mean to jerk myself off, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm making a movie for $10,000, and it looks better than this piece of shit. Why don't you frame things in an interesting way, so that I can get a sense of the characters, and the struggles, and what's going on? A really great movie is one that you can watch with the sound off and you can still understand what the fuck is going on. Movies are a visual medium, and when you shoot everything like this, and like this, and like this, and like this, it gets boring. The acting. The acting in this movie is absolutely horrible, which is surprising because we have an all-star cast. We have a Goldberg, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, a wizard of Waverly Place, James Cameron, and a Ghostbuster. Is the plaintiff prepared to make its opening statement? No one in this movie emotes anything. 
They all just seem bored. Sabrina, the middle-aged witch, always looks upset. Ernie Hudson doesn't know what movie he's in. And this girl, I, I don't know. I don't watch the Goldbergs. I think that's what she's from. We talked for a long time, and I could tell that she really cared. Mm. I asked her how she kept it all together so well, and she said, Jesus. 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 Oh my god! Let's discuss her character for a second. So what happens in, in her plotline, plotline 27B, is that she is like upset that her brother died. Um, she never emotes at all and shows this. Like even when they're moving all his shit out of his room, they never show her crying. She's like the girl in the last movie who cried when she got cancer but didn't cry. <laughs> okay, this is your big scene. Cry. Come on, cry, your brother died. Come on. There you go, you're starting to tear up there. Oh, oh, you lost it. Oh, you lost it. Nah, that's good. We can do another take, but why would we? Good, good, got, got it, great, uh, good. And then some lady comes back in and gives her a Bible that was her brother's. Like, of all the shit he had in his room, the only thing you give her is a Bible. And then she reads it and she finds out the word of God. Isn't that sort of like what Jesus meant when he said that we should love our enemies? Yes. Uh, the writer of the Gospel of Matthew records Jesus as saying, you have heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Did this happen? I've asked Bob Fessler to sit in. He's the school's attorney. And your answer incorporated specific detail. The words of Jesus, do you believe your response was in line with Mr. Paul? What were you thinking, Grace? Then they show the lawyers and the principal and they're all portrayed as like evil people. Okay, I know lawyers are evil, I know, but I don't think they're this comically over the top evil unless they're in a Mel Brooks film. This movie's version of drama is just to have people yell at each other or to have people like kind of cry because no one can actually cry because no one can act. <laughs> and in case you missed the characters from the last film, these guys come in too. I don't think customer service is my forte. So you decided to become a waiter? Well, this is where I do my dinner theater. In the mornings, I serve up croissants. In the evenings, I serve up Chekhov. Oh. Hey, uh, listen, sorry about the whole car not working thing. Hmm. And so does this woman. What? Now, to recap, in the last film, this woman had cancer, and then she kind of cried about it. Kind of. She cried with no tears. <laughs> and then in this film, miraculously, her cancer is gone. It's gone. My cancer's... it's gone. Oh my goodness. That's incredible. I know, I just... Prayer is a powerful thing. And it turns out, God has much bigger plans for you. Oh, so it wasn't doctors or the medicine? It was Jesus the whole time. Praise Jesus, everyone! He cured her cancer! It wasn't the doctors or the medicine, it was Jesus, everyone! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Sing it! Hallelujah! Praise Jesus, everyone! Jesus, everyone! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! A dumb premise. As if all this wasn't bad enough, the plot makes no fucking sense. Well, she got a teacher in trouble for asking her about Jesus. What? This wannabe Catholic girl brings up religion in a class. She says something about Jesus, and then she answers her question very fairly. And some random kid in the class was so offended by this, for some reason, that he decides to pull out his phone and start texting his parents or the principal about how offended he is. And then she gets called in, and is suspended just for this. That's not how the real world works. No one would ever get suspended or fired for saying that. Now I have a cousin who's a teacher and I also have a close friend that's a teacher and I asked them both if someone could be fired for saying something like this. My cousin told me about this little thing called tenure. In layman's terms, tenure is the idea that after teaching a certain number of years, the rights of a teacher are protected. The main point of tenure is to protect teachers from being fired without just cause. Most states in the country have established the probationary period as three years. Because, of course, sometimes teachers are going to have to be rough with their students, give them bad grades, punish them academically. And this basically protects teachers from being fired when a 
parent complains about something. She also said, and I quote, you would literally have to punch the kid in the face to get fired. Saying Jesus, especially if referring to them in a historical context, would not result in anything close to resembling this movie. Of course, those are just two teachers, but I'm willing to bet they know more about this whole process than um, Pure Flix Entertainment. At Pure Flix, our mission has not changed, and it will not change. Our heart will always be to create entertainment that can change the culture for Christ, one heart at a time. A response from Ms. Wesley, confessing the inappropriateness of and apologizing for her actions, along with a pledge not to engage in similar discussion of Jesus in the future. I'm confident that we can move forward on that basis. No. Just apologize. I understand you did nothing wrong and there would be no reason to apologize, but just do it. I would rather stand with God and be judged by the world than stand with the world and be judged by God. That has nothing to do with anything. They're arguing that you shouldn't have brought up Jesus in the classroom, even though you really didn't. You were just answering a student's question. Whoever this dumb student was, was kind of offended by what you said for some reason. So just say, I didn't mean to offend him and I'm sorry. And that would have been the end of it. I am not gonna be afraid to say the name Jesus. So now, cause everyone's an idiot, they decide that they have to go to court. And so the atheist dude, goes to the parents of Brooke and is like, can we just say that your daughter Brooke was the one that was offended by the teacher's statement so that we could have you testify in court? Why didn't you go to the actual parents who were offended by this statement? Who was this kid? We never find out who he is. Why don't you find him? Why are you going to a random student who happens to be the most religious one in the fucking classroom and ask her parents if she could testify? So their logic is if that Brooke goes to court and is part of this big case on freedom of speech and freedom of religion in the classroom, that that would be good for her college resume and it would get her into a good college, which is literally not how anything works. Why would being part of a, of a court case get you into a college? If she's a fucking idiot, she won't get into a good college. Like Harvard would look at her resume and go like, man, she was part of a court case that was pretty big, but she's like not even part of it. They don't even want her in the courtroom, of course, because the second they put her in the courtroom, she's gonna defend the teacher. She didn't do anything wrong. She was just trying to help me. Brooke, order! I'll have order! This is not how a courtroom works. Everyone just barges in and everyone's yelling and everyone could just like get up and leave and walk around and just do whatever the fuck they want. I'm almost 17 years old. It's not like I can't think for myself. I just don't have the right to speak. Brooke, what are you doing? Not unless you are called as a witness, young lady. Court is actually very mannered. But no, everyone just screams and yells and makes arguments that make no sense and have no proof or logic behind them. Mr. Inland, you are out of order and I charge you with contempt. I accept the charge because I have nothing but contempt for these proceedings. If we're going to insist that a Christian's right to believe is subordinate to all other rights, then it's not a right. Somebody is always going to be offended. Now, both sides make very good points, but that's not the point. They are making points about things that aren't even related to the case. Prosecution has, like, no proof for anything, and the defense has no defense other than... We can reconstruct the basic facts about Jesus just from non-Christian sources outside the Bible. That's not what we're talking about. The case is, was it fair for the teacher to bring up Jesus in historical context if a student asked a question related to Jesus? The answer is, of course, yes. But this movie takes place on a different planet, apparently, where the answer is no and where you get fired for saying such a thing. So yes, in this completely stupid hypothetical case, the Christians are right. But like I said before, such a thing has never happened in this country. And in instances where it did happen, it's cause someone was literally preaching to other people. Which of course you cannot do because everyone believes in something different. So now we're stuck cause the rest of this movie is automatically invalid. Because this would never happen in the real world. So the only thing I can do at this point is just go along with it. Believe it or not, the Christians win. 
of course. <laughs> We are Jack. And the atheists go away angry, and then one of the atheists say, Not to mention you prove the existence of Jesus Christ. So the handsome Catholic lawyer who hooks up with this bitch later starts yelling at her and making her seem like a terrible person. So basically, the movie and the writers couldn't defend their points at all. And so the only way they could win is to just guilt the jury into siding with her. So what was the point then? He played our role in attacking Wesley. He made the jury hate everyone but her. You didn't prove to me that God is not dead. You couldn't prove anything. You didn't make any points. If he hadn't pulled the stupid stunt, presumably the evil atheists would have won. Which doesn't make any sense either, but whatever. It's so bad, and it tries to make every Catholic seem as if there's some kind of victim to discrimination. I believe Miss Wesley's entitled to her own opinions, and that includes in the classroom. There's nothing subtle about it. There's nothing smart about it. It's a series of arguments that don't make sense and aren't even connected with the film that we're watching. It gets rather repetitive, actually, because the point of every scene is that God is good. Jesus is good. God's not dead. God is good. <laughs> all the time. God is good. And all the time. God is good. If you're Christian, you're good. Your diseases will be cured. You'll all be a happy family. And you all get to go to a free rock concert where these guys get to sing about Jesus and you all live happily ever after. And if you're anything besides that, you're a bad person. That's terrible. It's a film full of straw man arguments, nonsense, and lies. This is not how the world works, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why this commercial sucks. It's just stupid. Okay, now that I'm done with this review, I'm gonna go back to selling Scientology to the masses. <laughs> Hello, hi. Have you heard of Scientology? Yes, it's really a wonderful religion. I bet, oh, hello? Oh, hello? Hi, it's me, Ralph Seppi Jr. I'm here to talk to you about Scientology. Oh, hey, Tom. No, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was you. Tell Katie I said hi. Oh, you got divorced? Oh. Again? Hello? Oh, wait, I'm calling you. Okay, last number for today. Bad boy, Jason. You didn't come to see me. No, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I totally forgot. Well, Ralph, what the fuck? I told you to stop fucking calling me. Gay fucking faggot ass faggot. Hi, sir. Have you heard of Scientology? <laughs>